<laughs> you talk to me. You guys See, people, like people, that. Actually, funny. people actually doubted that that was what it meant. And then when they saw the hard knots and actually saw you say it, really? they made them believe it. Because <laughs> they thought you were talking, you know. Like nonsense? Like, or, oh, no, dude, <laughs> if I wanted to talk smack. I think you'd probably know I'm talking smack. That's <laughs> not even close. <laughs> It's just part of the game. It's fun. Like that was that was fun, and um, that talk to me thing. Really, that's like a like as we came into OTAs. Jalen Waddle was like that. That was Jalen Waddle would just say that um, constantly throughout OTAs, and then um, I guess it just been used so much. Like I just started saying it to a point where everyone was like, "That's hilarious!" Every time you say it. Um, in practice, I'd throw a bomb in the D lines, like, bro, seriously? And I look at them and I'm like, talk to me. And then they'd start laughing and then they'd start using it too. Um, and it, it really started out, started out that way. So uh, I take no credit. And then, um, like, that, that's Jalen Waddle's deal. But um, the whole signal thing, like, just made it even funnier. It, it, heightened, um, it heightened it. So uh, people that knew. Um, that were inside knew that knew what that was um, could sort of hear me saying it uh, and could hear you know other people saying that when I gestured that so that's what that was. Have you have you, have you warmed up a little bit to, to hard knocks? I know early on you weren't totally thrilled that they were here. Has it? No, yeah, yet? they didn't air my uh, episode from the house yet. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I was, I was messing. <laughs> no, I was kidding. <laughs> No, I um, no, yeah, they they haven't um, they haven't asked uh, this week or um, last week. I'm sure they have asked Ann, but Ann hasn't brought it to my attention yet, or I, I don't know. But um, I mess around with them with that as well. Um, I'll just tell them I, I'll see you guys later on tonight, and they uh, they think it's funny when they know it's like uh, I don't know if he's being serious or he's not being serious, so. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I mean, still still a lot of lot of games left. One thing the last Hard Knocks um, uh, showed was a speech that Mike gave the team where uh, he took a lot of accountability for some of his play calls. So what does that mean to you to to the players when uh, coach is taking that level of accountability on himself? Yeah, I I think that shows the leadership that he he has. That um, it's not something that is a one time deal. It's something that as a team we're we're actually sort of used to. Um, he's one of the first to admit he's wrong when he is wrong. Um, and he's going to be also the first to admit that if it was a baller play call, that it was a baller play call. Like that's, that's the reason as to why we work, why we do, do this, why we invest so much into it. Um, but, uh, it, it's sort of at a point where, um, like, because he takes so much accountability, everyone also shares that same trait of, uh, like no, it's 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 my fault. I could have did better on my part, or you know, everyone feels that sort of um, uh, need or want to to take to take the fall or take the blame. But uh, it's rare that I think you ever see that in in this league because it is tough and uh, it is a job and it is a, a you know result oriented. You know what you put out there um, is you know basically how however long you you are able to keep your job or, or whatever it is. But um, that's what this league is. And I think it's super cool that he does that and uh, it trickles down to all of us. How much do you take away from the Bills-Cowboys game last week when looking at the Cowboys defense, considering their whole body of work has been much better than what you saw last week? Yeah, I, th I, I, don't, I don't necessarily look at uh, one particular game when we watch games. Um, but you you do want to look at games that uh, you know where they struggled, what what were their struggles, um, you know things that we can take advantage of, um, you know within the pass game, the run game. But um, you know I, I sort of think of our team last week coming off the loss to to Tennessee. Um, you know I can I can sense that that's where they would probably be. Um, not a very fun team meeting to be in, um, and and guys are you know, are going to be dialed in, locked in, doing whatever they need to do to get that feeling, um, you know, off their chest or off their shoulders. And so 
uh, for me, I'm, I mean, we're, we're going to prepare the same way we've prepared for any other team. So we're expecting their best. They're going to do anything and everything they can, um, you know, um, to, to, to beat us. And we're going to do the exact same. Mike was asked uh, earlier about um, you know your interceptions and the fact that you haven't really thrown any in the past three games, and he said you know that that's natural that you're going to throw picks, but he feels like you're progressing each game. How do you think you've grown, maybe from the beginning of the season to now in the final month of the season? Well, I think there's there's continued uh, growth every every uh, every time I step out on that field. Um, there's always something new that I can learn. Um, you know, just when you think you you got it and you've been playing for however long, however many games. Um, there's always going to be new things, uh, new challenges, new obstacles. Um, but that's the beauty of this game. And, and for, for me, I think that's um, also allowed uh, you know, me to be the, the human that I am also. Um, and I think in this league, you also mature a lot quicker um, you know, because as good as things can be, uh, they can be just as bad the next week or the following week. And, uh, through all of those obstacles of the wins and the losses, so many things that you can learn from. And um, this league is, is just like golf. Like you can go out and shoot really good one day and then you're like, oh, I, I'm in my rhythm. The next day you go out and you, you know, you, you forgot how to even hit the ball the way you were hitting it yesterday. And it'll humble you in that sense. So uh, it's just like uh, just like golf. Golf and football um, is the best way I could sort of correlate that. So well, kind of, um, real quick, I'm sorry, if I could just building off of his question, uh, Deron Bland has a lot of splash plays this year. When you watch him on tape, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, you you don't you don't just uh, you know you just don't show up on Sundays and you know and poop that out, if you will. Um, you know, having an NFL record and pick sixes and whatnot, you you don't just uh, show up on Sundays and and do that. Um, so. You know, he, he's done a great job. I, I think um, Dan Quinn has done a great job for their defense as well. Um, they got really talented players up front, really talented players in the back end. Um, and we, we know what we're going to have to do. We know what kind of game this is going to be. It's going to be a hard fought uh, physical 60 minute game. And uh, we'll be ready uh, come time Sunday. Somebody had a question, please. Okay. Um, I know Mike worked under Dan Quinn. <coughs> Um, and you're so candid and honest, I'm knowing you're going to give me an honest answer. How much does that help you when a guy has worked under a coach and he knows his ins and outs of his defense and obviously not with the Cowboys, but his, ment his mentality and tendencies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it, it could go both ways of uh, Mike understanding um, sort of how, how, you know, Dan has ran his his defense or how how his like he he would uh, game plan for teams and whatnot but I also think that um like with Dan knowing that um that we could expect things that um other teams have ran um that have been successful against us as well so uh it's it's sort of in in between of we know but then at the same time be prepared for the unknown to you got to stick to your rules what the what do your rules tell you this is how you're going to have to read this out if, if that's the case. Um, and then same thing could be, uh, you know, for, for Dan, um, been around, you know, how uh, Mike installs run game, how, how they've um, done things with, with Kyle and, and whatnot. So I think it could work both ways, but um, we'll just be ready for the unexpected. Raheem was talking after the game about Waddle and how maybe he was beating himself up throughout the year that he performs like he does. What have you seen in Waddle throughout the year and now after that big game Sunday? Yeah, I, I personally, um, me personally, I, I've seen I've seen someone that's just came in day in, day out, just grinding. Um, not once did I ever see him feel sorry for himself um, throughout um, the success that Tyreek has had. Um, but you you could see that that there had been some uh, some times where it's like, Man, I, I sort of wish um, I was involved more, or or this happened more, this happened. But um, you know, it's one of those deals where I, I've said it before, where we've we've called a play for Waddle to be um, the person, you know, to be first in that progression, and it just so happens the defense doesn't allow for for that, um, you know, route to to be open. Um, but as as anyone else would, um, you know. <laughs> He, he, he was frustrated. I'm sure he was very frustrated, um, you know, coming from being 
the wide receiver one in, in my rookie year and in my second year to, you know, wide receiver one, wide receiver one B, like what, you know, where, where do I fit in, in this offense? Um, and so for, you know, for him to have, have been able to go out, um, you know, and, and show to everyone and remind everyone, like letting you guys know, like I'm, st I'm still that person. Like if you guys allow me that opportunity. So um, very proud of what he's done, what he's put on tape and what he continues to do for our team. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'd say about that. So you guys can clinch a playoff spot if you win this weekend. How important or how meaningful will that be for you getting to play this late into the year and have that opportunity to do it here? I wish you didn't share that. <laughs> I wish you didn't share that. I, I had no idea um, uh, about any of the, the um, scenarios of what, what that would have looked like. Um, at any time, we just, we just want to come out the game with a win um, and we want to stack those together. And so, you know, if you can win them all, that's 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 what it is. Weren't the Cowboys your favorite team growing up? Yeah, yep. Cowboys are my favorite team growing up. Um, they played on prime time a lot, and in Hawaii, um, you know, prime time is like three o'clock p.m. <laughs> They're like, dang, it's night over there. It's like the the sun is still up over here. Um, so, yeah, we we uh, I come from a family that. Uh, they, they're big Cowboys fans, um, but uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Everyone's Dolphins fans. And then the ones who still support the Cowboys, they're probably not my family anyways. <laughs> what's it going to be like playing them for the first time? Say what? What's it going to be like playing them for the first time, the team that you grew up rooting for? Uh, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Um, I mean, it, it's going to be cool for, for the moment, just being able to see the star, uh, being able to see those guys in their jerseys, whatever and whatnot. Um, you know, some of the guys that are playing, I used to watch them while I was in high school, um, playing high school football. And now I get to play against, um, you know, some of the guys on their team. So that'll be cool. But at the end of the day, uh, we, I got a job and, you know, we, we want to go out there and we want to beat them. Mike just said it's been a long time since the defense has played what they've shown you on tape, adjusting to your, your motion and mm -hmm. timing. Can you maybe share the evolution for you and like controlling the offense when it comes to timing and motion and what a defense is supposed to do versus what they do. Yeah. Well, I I would say with our motions, it gets to a point where if we we just call a play without a motion, uh it's like like it, it's very weird and it's not just weird for me, it's weird for the entire offense. Like, well, are you sure we're just lining up and running this play? Um there are perks to like doing both where it's like, okay, they've motioned so many times, like, and we've, we've got however many looks from them, like we're expecting that. So guys are going to get ready. They're looking at their keys and sometimes we'll just come up and snap the ball and not, not motion. I think all of that, uh, um, plays, plays into the rhythm of our offense. They also play into, um, keeping the defense on their, on their toes. Like we, every play we have to communicate, um, we don't know what that's going to look like, but we're going to have to communicate whether with, if that's with the front, with the change of strength, with the Y, or you know the other motions, the back end is going to have to communicate. So that's what it forces those guys to do. And uh, for us, I think we've, because we've seen so many different looks off of those motions, um, it sort of helps um, you know, how we need to block it in the run game and then uh, where we can see um, you know, in as far as space within their defense with the routes that we have. Growing up, growing up. Without Tyree last week uh, and being able to put up 30 points and move the ball like you guys did, was that something that confirmed something within yourselves or was any criticism about your ability to do so without him something that came mainly from outside the building? No, I, I, I would say um, it, it's always tough when you, when you don't have, uh, you know, one of your best guys – out there um to to me i I'd, I'd, I'd personally say like none of us none of us really really cares who's out there or who's not like at the end of the day whoever's in there we all trust that we can get it done with those people even when i wasn't in there last year like that was the mindset that that those guys had like okay like two is down we can't do anything about it tyreek's down like we can't do anything about it we got to go out there we still got to play those guys don't care that Tyreek's out. Like those guys didn't care that I was out last year. It doesn't matter. We got to go out there and play. And I think that should tell you a lot about about the guys that that were out there. Um, 
you know, everyone wants to make this, like I, I keep saying, it, everyone wants to make this about me, about Tyreek. Like, please keep pushing it to Tyreek. Like, make it about Tyreek. I understand that my platform and who I am in this league as a quarterback makes me, if you want, polarizing, whether I'm the best, whether I'm the worst, like, <laughs> I could care less. Like, I don't listen to it. This is my bearer of bad news and no, <laughs> I hate to say it. I hate to say that, but that's my bearer of bad news. If anyone has something to, if, if anyone has something bad to say about me, but at the end of the day, like, I, I really don't care. But if she does share it with me, I mean, I keep receipts. We all, we all have, have, have a way of how we do things, but like all the narratives about it, I am, yeah, sure. I am only good with Tyreek and I, that you're right. I am, that is the only time I am at my best. Um, you're right. I'm only good when Jalen's in. I, 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 <laughs> I could care less about it. Like, sure. Uh, if Jalen and those guys are not, like I'm only as good as Raheem Mostert allows me to be. Like that's, that's what the narrative needs to be and we're able to win games, and we're able to go where we want to go as a team. I am the worst football player, if that's what you want. Like, I don't care. Like, I really don't. So whatever it is, whatever you need on your show, like, take clips out, out of what I just said. Do, it, do what you need to do. Like, that, I'm just here to do my job, and my job is to help our guys win games. So, Tua, it's, it's not a narrative. It's actually a fact that you're the most – popular player in the NFL among fans. No player has more fan... No, but I'm going to ask you how you feel about it. No player is more popular than you. You're number one in fan support. Nice. How do you feel about that? Uh, it, it makes me feel weird. <laughs> it's different. Um, just because I try not to make things about myself. I like to make it about others. Um, so... Uh, that, I mean, that's, that's probably, um, yeah, that, that it's, it's unique, I would say, but of course I, I, I appreciate the support from the fans. I appreciate, uh, you know, those that are in support of me and, and my teammates. Um, I, I, I don't know what, may, well, what allows you, like, what makes you say that? Like what statistic is, oh, oh, okay. Got you one jerseys is it something that it's just it's so common it doesn't even resonate with you or does it still have like a little impact on you there's so many jerseys these people are yeah. wearing your number well for for me like every time i step out there on the field it's always just about like me proving myself like right every time like dude yeah you came into this league like you like I would even question myself like am I even like good like uh, you know like like do I even belong in this league things like that and then it's like every time I step foot out on that field and I see someone wearing my jersey like yeah it's like dude I I want to prove myself right but prove like you know to those people as well like dude yeah like you you had to have brought that jersey bought that jersey for a reason like whether you're a fan of me as a football player or a fan of my journey or a fan of um, things I've, I've done. Like, yeah, every, every time I see that, I'm like, that, that's super cool. Because as a kid growing up, uh, like, you, like I, I would do the same for, like, other players. Like, I'd wear their jerseys hoping to be like them. And then now, like, it's come full circle. So to be able to hear that, that's very cool. That's very cool. And uh, um, just the, the, how that process works, it's cool. But like I said, it's also – a little, little weird when I become the spotlight of it. <laughs> your brother is about to go into the draft, uh, preparing for the draft. And what was your reaction to hearing that? And uh, what advice do you have uh, for him? Uh, well, um, I'm I'm always here for for you know, Leah. I'm always here for you. Uh, you know that. Um, whatever you need, I I can help with. Uh, but outside of that, I I just tell my brother to to listen to uh, what he thinks is best when he hires agents or when he, you know, has to go throughout that process of, um, you know, that. But I, I'm, I'm not the one that's going to tell you who you should go with or whatnot. Like, that should be totally up to you um, because when it's your decision, uh, regardless of if it's right or wrong, in the end, you always make it right.